State Farm Center on this Thursday night here in Champaign. The Illini fan base ready to go. Well, on the lineup side, the one notable difference for Illinois, Sincere Harris makes his first college start. Sky Clark is out with the shoulder injury today. And you see the Bethune-Cookman side under Reggie Theus. They've got some good guards that will dip into throughout the broadcast. Marcus Garrett is an Illinois native who will be extra pumped for this matchup. Reduced again, that main difference in Sincere Harris being out. Reggie Theus, Stephen, you go back a long ways with Reggie Theus. Yeah, he's a he's a guy that I idolized coming up in terms of the way that he played. A big guard uh, back in the day could really score the rock. Then for Illinois, of course, Brad Underwood, sixth season on the sideline as the head man. His group trying to bounce back from the loss to Missouri. Said tonight is about playing and running as hard as possible. That was the message to his group at the end of shoot around earlier today. Well, I was quite surprised, Jason. Our officials are DJ Cartinson, Brian Ann Singler, and Tariq Lucas. Ready to jump it up, and off we go. I'm really happy to see Sincere Harris get the start he's really worked his tail off and plays extremely hard he resonates so much energy it'll be interesting to see how he impacts this starting lineup Illinois looking to get off to a much better start right away they do that on the defensive end back comes Terrence Shannon offed it up and back comes Bethune Cookman here's Marcus Garrett who we talked about in the starting lineups averages 14 points per game Illinois native out to KJ Davis his three comes up short See the line they've got that emphasis on trying to get up and down the floor quickly tonight. They've got the athletic lineup to do it. Dane Danger draws a foul. He'll go to the line. Well, you can see with the emphasis and the intention is for the Illini tonight. Get out on the break, get to the rim. I mean, they could have called a foul there for Shannon and got the ball over to Dane and just couldn't finish. But nice attack in the paint area by the Illini early. One of the areas where Dane Danger has struggled has been at the free-throw line. Oftentimes, he'll stay after practice to work on that aspect of his game. Off on the first one, again, this Illinois team against Missouri. You look at the start, it's kind of predicated on turnovers. Mizzou just jumped all over him. So limiting that today is very key. And getting in the half-court sets, they want to be more fluid. They want the ball to jump around with energy, in the words of Brad Underwood. Yeah, and... and you know, you talk about Dane struggling at the line. The team struggles at the line as well. Last in the Big Ten from free throws uh, for the Illini. So not just Dane. They, they got to get into the gym and, and work that out. 65% as a team right now. There's the turnover that Brad Underwood wants to avoid. They turned it over on 29% of their first half possessions against Missouri. Yeah, that's, you know, you're not going to be able to compete with anybody uh, just coughing a rock up like that. And I mean, it, the thing is, you can have certain turnovers that go out of bounds and you can get set defensively. They had a number of live ball turnovers that resulted in a number of easy looks. State Farm Center still standing, awaiting the first bucket. Two turnovers so far for Illinois. Okay, look a little bit. It's like they're trying to run a set here. And there's a little bit lack of communication going on. Hawkins to Meyer, upperclassman to upperclassman, but the denial at the rim that time. Elijah Jose came over on the defensive side. It's a beautiful block without foul. Still no buckets here in Champaign. Joe French, the preseason SWAC player of the year, denied by Danger. Four and one here for the fighting line now. And Thurman Hawkins able to finish it. Nice decision by Sincere Harris. He could have gone up and finished that shot, but chose to give it off to Hawkins, who's been struggling offensively. That's a good look from Sincere Harris. 0 4 start for Bethune Cookman. So Sincere Harris already making his imprint felt. He really does that on this end. You see how tight up he is guarding here. And he forced the turnover. Back comes Terrence Shannon in the open floor. Nice job. I thought Shannon was going to try to go up and dunk, but he 
chose to get to the rim as quickly as possible and as opposed to going up for the highlight reel. Nice decision. Again, he had the 22 points against Missouri, led the way in scoring for Illinois in that, that, that game. There's a turnover on Bethune Cookman. Ball's going back to Illinois. Well, you're talking about Sincere Harris getting the first collegiate start tonight, and those type of decisions right there will get him some more playing time. And Terrence Shannon doing what he does best, getting out in the open court. That athleticism, an easy deuce. This is a three from Harris, draws a foul. Poor glass as well. I'm looking over at the Illini bench. <laughs> There's, a, there's a few smiles from the coaching staff on that look. Sincere Harris kind of geeked up to be starting in his first collegiate start. And you know what, Jason, when you play hard, that's when things happen like that. And Sincere leaves it on the floor. Brad Underwood today said he plays as hard a defense as a freshman as any player he's seen. How about the start for Sincere Harris, even though it doesn't get that free throw to drop? He's already forced one turnover defensively. You know he's going to do that. Plays so hard and gives you a three-point shot as well. That's just an added bonus. Yeah, that's right. And he's guarding Marcus Garrett, and he's, he's going to make it very difficult for Marcus, who is a pretty good scorer. Marcus going to have to get creative to try to shake Sincere. Best defender against best offensive player there on this end of the field. There you go. Sincere Harris won the battle once again. Back he comes in transition. Hawkins calling for it. Meyer takes it and drains it. That's beautiful offense. Coleman Hawkins, I thought, was going to let go of the three, put it on the deck, got it over to Meyer. Meyer playing extremely well. See his numbers on the season, but he's averaged 18 over the last four games. Illinois made their last four field goals. They're loving it in Champaign. Harris went for the steal, led to a Joe French three. The Thune Cookman still scoreless. Some great ball movement right now. Line I doing a great job of picking up their tempo and really staunch on the defensive end to, to start. Fox, it's a New Year's Eve college hoops doubleheader on Fox. The second ranked UConn battles Xavier. Then fifth ranked Arizona takes on Arizona State. It all tips off Saturday at 11.30 a.m. Eastern on Fox. Couldn't think of a better way to spend New Year's Eve. UConn just knocked off Villanova on FS1 last night. Meanwhile, here is some excellent transition game and ball movement from Illinois. Yeah, and you want to see this if you're the line eye. I think sometimes they try to make the difficult play. Just be simple with it. Hit the next man and have the trust. It's one of the things that Brad Underwood is trying to establish with this year's version of the Illini with all these new players, Jason. You know, they you've got to go through some heat to develop some trust, and they're going through that now. You saw the ball movement on that possession that we showed you as the bucket finally goes down out of the timeout for Thune Cookman, Kevin Davis getting it to drop. We've gotten a number of times the ball touches different hands for Illinois today. I mean, Brad Underwood doesn't want as many quick shots in the shot block, and you're seeing it again here on this possession. Yeah, and that, uh, right now, Bethune Cookman with the first time they've gone zone. Excellent read there by Coleman, and RJ just missed the open look. Got a carry call on Zion Harmon. For Bethune Cookman, prior to that last bucket, they had missed their first seven shots on nine possessions, which included three turnovers, a couple of them forced by the start of Sincere Harris, who's also running the point, we might add. I love it. I mean, he's a guy after my heart. You know, I was a defensive player. He's a, he is a defensive player extraordinaire. Terrence Shannon joins the three-point party. Good to see him knocking one down from beyond the arc. Went 0 for 5 from deep in that Missouri game. I think when Terrence allows the game to come to him in that situation, I think he's really good. But when he forces the issue, that field goal percentage drops. Bucket from Dylan Robertson. That's what you hear about uh, Terrence Shannon. Really, this offense in general. It feels like when it's in rhythm, when it's fluid versus forced, that's when it's going to be better. Yeah, you know, one thing I'd like to see Jason win 
The Alana gets stagnant offensively if Dane Danger is in the game. I'd like to see them go to him in the post because he can create some mismatch issues, get to the free throw line, and set up open jumpers for, for his teammates. This lineup a bit smaller. Danger's checked out. RJ Melendez in. Another turnover called on Bethune Cookman here. As Jaden Epps and Jane Danger come in here for Illinois. There's Reggie Theus, head coach for Bethune Cookman. And Reggie looked that way when he played. And I'm not going to say how long ago that was, because that was a while ago. But you, I mean, you guys go back into the 80s. Yeah, I mean, but he, together. Yeah, he's, I'm telling you, man, Reggie Theus was such a unique player. And you really don't understand how big he is until you get next to him. Legit 6'6", six, 6'7". Six, six, and I mean, he can score on a phone booth. Jaden Epps gets that bucket to go, plus a foul. Beautiful cut. Another example of that ball movement that we're talking about. Yeah. Off the ball cutting as well. Well, since the Missouri game, it looks like the Illini have really uh, put an emphasis on trying to have good floor spacing and cutting opposite of the basketball. Epps gets a back screen. Does a great job. Bethune Cookman out of position has, has the foul. Sincere Harris is checked out along with Matthew Meyer. Sharon Shannon on the bench too, a trio that's off to a great start in this game for Illinois. Zion Harmon couldn't get the fadeaway shot to go. They'd love to get Ty Rogers involved, 20 and white today. Coleman Hawkins pulls up, that was a deep three. Bethune Cookman's looking to run. Davis wiggling his way into the lane, able to get an easy two. I'm telling you, Kevin Davis has done some impressive things here to start the game. A sneaky athlete. A really consistent score for them last season as well. Man, he, he picks and chooses his spots well. The star players for Bethune Cookman as the three goes up in the corner and drops down. RJ Melendez joining the three point party. But Bethune Cookman offensively, their star players have been so up and down this year, it's been a struggle to find consistent offense. They started 0 for 7 today. Another turnover. That's their fourth. Now a 2 on 1 for Illinois. Jaden Epps finishes this time. Boy, Jaden Epps, I'm telling you, when he gets downhill, he knows how to score in the paint. Nice job of the sidestep of the defender getting to the bucket. Now look at that. 13 points off turnovers already for Illinois. They're getting after the Wildcats. I think, see, their Wildcats get in trouble when they try to go one on one. Turning over number five, RJ Melendez. Couldn't quite capitalize on it. it Looks like Marcus Garrett wasn't quite anticipating that pass. Kevin Davis down low, got called for a travel. Well, Illinois flying high in a hot start. They're up 21-6. Look at Reggie Theus here, going way back. The chain, the throw. That's a little throwback right there. Oh, yeah, that's, that's, that's a good look. High socks. Yes. Oh, in the Bulls uniform. But he's got the bling. You know, right. you, you had to have the bling back in the late 70s, early 80s, you know? He's got some ties to multiple coaches around the Big Ten. Again, really good friends with Brad Underwood. He also played with Indiana head coach Mike Woodson on then the Kansas City Kings yep. in 1984 to 1986. King Kansas City obviously became the Sacramento Kings. But he's got some ties around the game. And he had really good success at New Mexico State as well. So he's had a number of stops. He's, he's been an actor. He was on a really popular TV show. And it, the name escapes me at the moment, but... He's done a lot of different things. His group has already played a couple of Big Ten teams this year, Iowa and Indiana, earlier in the season, both losses. So this already the third against the Big Ten opponent in a tough non-conference schedule for Bethune Cookman. We'll kick off SWAC play next week when the new year begins. Right, Dane's got to hold him off better to get that entry pass. Good defense there by Dylan Robertson. That's a matchup to watch. Robertson at six foot ten, Alabama native. Really one of the only guys on the roster that can match up with Danger. 
Melendez able to draw a foul. He'll go to the line. I've seen a couple of and one opportunities for the Illini so far. Scoring in a variety of ways. Transition, three-point range in the paint. Yeah, and R.J. Melendez, he was, he was determined to get that shot up. He, he wouldn't pass on that one. Nice spin move to draw the contact. Six different Illinois players scored in the first eight minutes of this game. Showcasing that this team, while they struggled offensively and have been stagnant of late, particularly over the last three games, they're deep. And they do still have two of the best wins in college basketball over Texas and over UCLA. Brad Underwood told us he's been watching film from those two games, maybe more so than any other game, trying to find what they did well in those moments. Terrence Shannon was really good in those moments in the big wins, but the ceiling is certainly high for this Illinois team. Oh, there's no doubt about it. And when you can beat a Texas and a UCLA and, and go to the wire with a, a team in Virginia that I think is going to win the ACC, I mean, it just shows the ceiling that this team has, but their floor is not pretty. And... A lot of fans saw that floor in St. Louis. And maybe one of the speed bumps that is expected with a group as young as they are and with as many newcomers no doubt. as they have. They rank 301st in the nation when it comes to overall experience. And Brad Underwood told us he'd take the, up and the, the, up, the upside of this group over really any team in recent years. Obviously last year being the Big Ten title season in the regular season. Yeah, and I, you know, when you take the resume of last last season's team at this juncture compared to this season's team at this juncture, you would take this team every single time based on the wins and their resume. So I know that people were a little alarmed by the loss at Missouri, but this team is still poised to make a nice run in the Big Ten Conference. 44 Big Ten wins for Illinois over the last three seasons. That's more than any other team in the conference. As you look at the resume comparison at this stage of the season versus at this stage of last season, to your point, again, you got to remember those two wins over Texas and UCLA this year. Only team in the country with two Ken Palm top ten wins. Yeah, so, I mean, the Illini are in good shape. And you mentioned it, Jason, when you're trying to integrate so many new players. And it's not like you got to, you know, he's playing five freshmen. I mean, five freshmen get regular minutes. And then May Mayor Shannon coming from the Big 12. I mean, Dane Danger was here all last season sitting out, but you just got so many new players trying to find their roles. You mentioned Danger there. He became the seventh Illini player to register on the score sheet in this game. 24 to 8 start for Illinois at home here. Well, their effort has been really good. You know, and that, that's what you can measure. Especially on that enforcing turnovers. That lead to transition points. And in this case, a transition jam for Danger. Now, that's, that's great hustle by Danger getting up the floor. Oh, we had a highlight on the other end. Robertson tried to answer back with a little oop of his own. <laughs> my ear called for the foul. He sure did. I mean, that's a pretty good play there. Danger with the good hands, active hands. Terrence gets out on the fast break, comes up short, but dang, danger at the rim. Brad Underwood pointed out, I mean, Dane Danger has had a couple of years in the weight room now to work on the lower half and his legs and saw his legs in action in that highlight. Yeah, just trim down and get in shape. You know, he, he arrived at Illinois a little bit, probably not more than a little bit, but he was out of shape and he's worked his tail off, changed his diet, and he's seeing the results of, of his hard work. Speaking of hard work, Sincere Harris checks back in for Illinois. He embodies hard work. And he has really sprouted a start for Illinois that's been predicated on forcing turnovers. 16 points off 10 Bethune Cookman turnovers so far. Woo Pretty move in the post from Dane Danger. Yeah, see, Brad Underwood uh, was saying that. Dane Danger had one of the best practices of any Illini this week. And so I'm not surprised to see him have success that we're seeing. Leads to a corner three. Meyer can get it. Look who's on the doorstep. Dane Danger. Oh, nice tap by Meyer. Leads to a reset. Boy, Brad Underwood is screaming at his team. Cut, move the ball. 
Myers three. Came up short. Board off to Marcus Garrett. Chicago native to French. Well, Joe French. Reggie Thea said he thinks Joe French is the best shooter in the country. Like that's high praise, but if somebody knows about shooting and scoring, it would be Reggie Thea. Matthew Meyer might have something to say about shooting as well. Good to see him actually can score on multiple levels. That time gets him to the paint. Well, oh, that 6'9 frame of his allows him to do a lot of different things. He's sneaky, athletically long, and when his jumper's flowing, it really opens up his game. A sincere Harris took a shot on that screen. Here's the shooting of French. Hasn't quite found that stroke of late. Shannon, he can really get downhill. Did so there and drew a foul. Just so strong. Overpowered his defender. Well, let's go back and take a look at Dane Danger. Look at him. That's, ladies and gentlemen, that's a Kevin McHale, Jack Sigma reverse pivot. Young people, look that up. I love your throwback references. Yeah, I mean, you, you, I love them. You got to educate, right? So if you have a reverse, if you catch an oppose, you reverse pivot, face your defender. And make a move. That's beautiful footwork by Dane Danger. My goal is to one day find a historical nugget that I can teach you. But for now, you sit here and be a student. That's what I, I love. That's my favorite part of work, my favorite part about working with you, my friend. I appreciate that, Jason. Uh, you know, I've got got a few decades on you, partner. So, <laughs> but you holding your own. That's all I can ask for. No, no, no. You're more than holding your own. Right now, this young Illinois team off to a 31-10 start. On this end, they've held Bethune-Cookman to no field goals over the last three minutes and change. The hands have been active. They've been in the passing lanes, really taking the first action away from the Wildcats like that. And Marcus was going. To, Marcus Garrett was going to score, and the line I have scouted Bethune-Cookman very well. Well, they forced 11 turnovers and they've used it to score 31 or so. Which again, uh, you look at that Missouri game, they turned it over on 29% of their first half possession. So it's been a much more disciplined game all around for the Illini tonight. And on this side, they're forcing turnovers and getting the, the pick sixes, in the words of Brad Underwood. Yeah, really getting into the passing lanes, active hands. Now look at the block from Sincere Harris. His start to this game has been so intriguing, so fun to watch. Again, his first college start today and making his imprint felt. Well, you know, this is what he hangs his hat on, and on the defensive end. Good timing that time. Marcus Garrett tried to throw the shoulder to knock him off, but Sincere Harris anticipated the contact and still able to get off his feet for the block. He's got three points and a block, but it, it, his game goes so far beyond the stat line. You see it once again there. Great job of forcing a very difficult shot. Right under which said he's never seen a freshman impact the game in more ways than Sincere Harris, really without scoring that much. Well, and that's, you know, <laughs> I'll let you in on some. 30 years ago, as a freshman, if you didn't play defense, you weren't getting off the bench. So Sincere is a little bit of a throwback in that regard where he understands that the way for him to get on the floor as a freshman right now is intensity and effort. And he's become a fan favorite of this fan base based on that effort. Definitely one of our favorites to watch. Oh, no doubt. He's got a couple of fans over here. Ooh. And crashing into our scores table, Damani McIntyre. Fortunate to see him get up. He's a fan down that he's trying to help up here. Boy, that fan is going to be. Yeah. He got hit pretty hard, too. I don't know. He might want to sit down and collect himself. I mean, he got hit pretty hard. Good to see him up. Nice. Demonte McIntyre comes over and lays him out and then helps him up. But the fan's going to feel that for a while. He just asked to see if he can get a picture of that. Well, Ty Rogers wants a picture of that jam. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. He should have watched Ty in that nice flush. And that could get Ty Rogers going offensively. Really has struggled to find his role on that end of the floor for the Illini here to start the season. 
But he's an uber talented player, though. He certainly is. He was the top ranked player in the state of Illinois coming out of high school this past year. Plenty of potential. It's the key word of this Illini team in general potential. RJ Melendez off the mark in the corner. But Coleman Hawkins tracking down the board. Harris nearly had it stripped. This will stick with Illinois. Matthew Meyer getting set to come back in. Well, now you're seeing some changes in the lineup. And the Illini trying to stay fresh and utilize that depth. They've had a nice start to this game. I think Brad Underwood, you know, the coaches will find something to be upset about, but he's probably, probably pleased with the way the team has started this evening. It's like Bethune Cookman back into his zone, Jason. Nice kick out from Danger led to a Meyer drive, a foul prior to the shot. Yeah, Kevin Davis. By the way, Dylan Robertson has two fouls. Again, remember, he's kind of the one of the few players on this Bethune Cookman roster that can size-wise match up with Danger. He's on the bench right now. They do bring in Elijah Holsey, who's a seven-footer from Orlando. Meyer will go to the free throw line here at the one-one. Well, I think when you are looking at the Wildcats, they're trying to get to the first half break uh, without a ton of foul trouble. You know, they, I know Reggie Theus was wanting to stay within range and shoot the ball better, but the Atlanta's defense has really smothered what the Wildcats are trying to do on the offensive end. It's a 9 0 run for Illinois over the last nearly four minutes here. Get a foul out high on Harris. Reggie Theus' team 0 6 on the road so far this year. Again, he's trying to really build the, as he worded it, infrastructure of that program he's a great coach obviously was an excellent player and a great great man in general off the floor oh yeah you know the thing is as we'll talk about a little bit later he's also athletic director so oh, yeah he's wearing multiple hats there in daytona beach good health defense that time let's do another turnover harris is running a little catch and hoop there it's a good look by Shannon and a better finish by Harris. He was off the ground when he caught it and, and finished with his offhand. Nice play. One of the seven newcomers on the Illinois roster this year. Danger guarding Jose down low. He gets doubled. Melendez swatted it away from behind. Shannon goes crashing into the scores table. This is going to stick with Illinois. Reggie Theus doesn't like the call. I don't like the call either. Thought there maybe should have been a foul there. Yeah, I mean, I understand why he's upset. You know, you love the hustle by Terrence Shannon, but he threw his body yep. into the player. So watch this. Damani McIntyre, yeah. he goes flying. There's contact there. So I understand why Theus is upset. Shannon on the drive and a foul. They got Damani McIntyre there. He's probably thinking we should have the ball right now. Oh, yeah. yeah. And a lot of times, you know, you, these HBCU teams, they have to go on the road so much to fund their programs with these games. And a lot of times, physically, they're overmatched. So it's, you know, you're trying to get your guys, keep them confident through this process because now Bethune Cookman, like the Illini, will enter conference play where they hope to have a lot more success. Open up with FAMU, I believe. Yep. That'll be next week. I mentioned Bethune Cookman, this is already their third game against the Big Ten team on the road this year. Played at Indiana and Illinois. I beg your pardon, Indiana and Iowa prior to this Illinois matchup. Are you seeing that Bethune-Cookman, they just can't initiate 
any offense. Jay Nepps is up here denying the basketball to Zion Harmon. And now they got their backs turned, may not even know the shot clock's running down. Set two. Oh, what, a, oh, what a double clutch from French to just barely get that off. Again, the preseason SWAC player of the year. He's had conversations with Reggie Theus, and they know that preseason is one thing. He wants to get it done consistently during the regular season. Really good shooter. Speaking of shooters, fire off the mark. Several players crashing the glass. Harmon on the drive, and Harmon had that block from behind. No foul called there. Saw Jay Neps get back defensively and come up with that block. Nice job on defensive transition. Boone Cookman trying to get out before the defense gets set. You see Epps nice hands there. Steven, you're talking about Jaden Epps there. Speaking of tough schedules, this Illini group, I mean, they've played Texas, UCLA, Virginia, Maryland, among others. And as Terrence Shannon takes away another steal, players like Jaden Epps, they've matched up against some of the best guards in the country. As there's a transition easy bucket there. So it's really all around as a group. They're getting reps against really good teams. And now you're seeing it here in a matchup that's kind of prepping them for conference play, which is right around the corner. Yeah, it, it's... They've really challenged themselves in, in a non-conference. Had the Illini, and so you, know, you get battle testing. You got to find out where you are with all these new players. And I think Underwood has to be pleased right now with the way his team is playing here in the first half. So that was the sixth three of the day for Illinois. Remember, they started one for nine from deep last time out. The Illini are got it rolling. Fast break is in effect. Coleman Hawkins with the bullet pass to lead. And then Jay Nepps to pain at, at one time. And I think they are come Big Ten season. The, the opponents may find it to be just that. No, Steven. You had a 56 and 6 home record here when you played back in the day. Yeah, but I wasn't by myself. <laughs> <laughs> I had about three guys that are up in the rafters right now is my teammates in uh, Kenny Battle, Nick Anderson, Kendall Gill. So uh, they had a lot to do with it as well. But yeah, we, we had a lot of success here in, in uh, Assem then Assembly Hall, now State Park Center. That was from 1986 to 1990. Some good days. 1989, Final Four flying a line I team. Brandon Lee, good job defensively staying down. Nearly forced another turnover there. Would have been number 15. Hawkins pull up three. Board to lead, but they got a foul called here. It looked like there was a push from behind. That's the second time Coleman shot an NBA three off of one pass. I'm not exactly sure why he's trying to uh, put it up so quickly. You know, he can get that shot anytime in the, in the possession. Move the defense a little bit and then get set. They're trying to find ways to get him re-involved re -involved offensively. Brad Underwood told us it's been at times kind of an overcomplication for him when it comes to what he's trying to do. Here's a three from Marcus Garrett. He's got 18 friends and family members in the stands tonight. Again, uh, the Chicago area native went to Hillcrest High School. Maybe some extra motivation for him today. Oh, there's no doubt about it. You know, there's a number of players that are from the state of Illinois, and there's so many players in the state they can't all play here in Champaign. So when they do come, you get an opportunity to play on this floor. You generally see a really good effort. Garrett's a really good player. Had 27 points in the Hume Cookman's loss to North Florida. It was a two-point loss, their most recent game. I think this is where he gets in trouble. Just like that. Getting too deep. It looks like he got hit across the face, but when you get too deep like that in the paint, you're not going to get the call from the official. He's looking for a foul. Instead of the opposite end, Jaden Epps gets called for the foul. So free throw is coming out for Kevin Davis. Third stop of his collegiate career. 
East Carolina and Samford the other two. He's got a nice feel and pace to his game. Yeah. He took a long three earlier. Looked very confident. Got in the paint. Was patient one time. Matthew Meyer tried to block his shot. He let Meyer go by and got the easy do. So, Dylan Cookman has got a couple guys, two or three players Joe French, Marcus Garrett, and Kevin Davis that can really score. After the lob, everyone's getting involved tonight. What well, little wrinkle off of the uh, continuity offense the Illini were running there, back screen, lack of communication. Danger does the rest. He said a couple of big jams. He's running the floor again. They're looking for him again. Now he'll go to the free throw line. Watch the back screen on this play, Jason. Really well done by the Illini. Right there, R.J. Melendez sets the back screen. Lack of communication. Danger gets rewarded. Then comes right back and runs the floor hard and gets rewarded for two free throw opportunities. You know, when I see him shoot Jason uh, Dane from the line, he's got good follow through. He's got good mechanics. I think it's a situation of repetition and confidence. And he works on it after practice pretty frequently. Just something if obviously he can use that body to get to the line consistently. It's just a matter of how many ever points he could add to his average by just knocking down those free throws more often. Yeah, he's, he's got to get better at that. I heard John Sally, the former Detroit Piston great, say, I think Bill Lambeer told him one time, if you can make three more free throws a game, you would make $1.5 million more per game. Mm. So John Sally was in the gym <laughs> two hours after practice every day. They can motivate you a little bit. Oh, heck yeah. Come contract time? Yes, sir. And Dane, you know, he's played him with, played himself into shape and big time post play. Really ratcheted up the defensive pressure here this out this evening. And again, I'm, I know I said it earlier, but I'm just so pleased that Sincere Harris is getting a chance to get extended minutes because he earned, he's definitely earned it. Didn't quite anticipate that pass coming. Leads to Garrett attacking the rim. Harris challenged him and was calling for a foul. Kind of a double whammy there. Well, you expect these things to happen because Sincere has not really been at the point guard position to start. So, Coleman trying to get used to him. Sincere Harris's first collegiate start tonight. Sky Clark out of the lineup with the shoulder injury that he's nursing. Hopefully, he can be back for conference play for the Illini again. That begins right around the corner here, early January. Play Northwestern, a group that you've talked about is one that could make the NCAA tournament if they keep playing defense the way they are. Listen, Chase Aldiz is playing as well as any guard in the Big Ten right now. Boo Booey is playing with so much pace and poise, and you you said it defensively, they'll cut your life, they'll cut your water off, right? They they will make you get away from your first action on your offensive set. So as long as Northwestern can stay healthy, they're locked in. Those guys have accepted their roles, and so they're going to be a tough game for anybody in the Big Ten. The Big Ten is deeper this year than it even was last year. There are no gimmies in this league. Yeah, I know Minnesota has struggled with injuries and everything, and they haven't had a good start, but Ben Johnson's going to get it going there before too long. To your point, after that Northwestern game, well, you've got a, a top 25 Wisconsin team here. Then you go to Nebraska, Nebraska team that nearly upset Purdue. I believe you yes. were calling that game. That's right. And then Michigan State follows that. So it's yep. deep. Another day in the Big Ten. Right. Yeah. Going to be a fun league this year. Oh, it, it's always a fun league. You know, it, it can be quote unquote down. It's still fun. These fans make it that way. Mm -hmm. They packed State Farm Center tonight here in Champaign. 
<laughs> Even though you can't tell. <laughs> Everybody's chilling a little bit. Uh, they have a Christmas dinner hangover, maybe, possibly. Who knows? It? A little quiet in there. They deserve to relax a little bit after the emotional ups and downs of Great point. the last three games. Great they point, can Jason. settle back and enjoy the margin that they're enjoying right now as we near halftime. Like what they're, they're enjoying right under was shirt jacket combo is pretty sweet repping the orange tonight there's a three from shannon just off the mark had to put the finishing touches on a sparkling first half of action for illinois fewest first half points they've allowed all season long getting it done on both ends from three-point range, they're knocking them down. They're forcing turnovers. 14 TOs to be exact, leading to plenty of transition buckets for this fighting Illini team that's getting back on the right track tonight here in Champaign. Seeing the Illini lead it after 20 minutes of play here in Champaign, you see the suit that you really admire, Stephen, here for Brad Underwood. It's popping with orange color tonight, and so is this venue on a Thursday night. They're loving the play of their Illini so far, and really all around have gotten it done but it started defensively yeah and you know what Jason when you have a game where you get beat and you, you don't feel good about yourself the first thing you want to do is get back on the court in a game situation and you could tell by the way the Illini started this game they were eager to get out here and show what they had worked on and practice since that game and been pretty impressive with their effort final game of 2022 for the Illini again they'll resume Big Ten play with Northwestern obviously a big in-state match up there but right now just trying to finish up business tonight business is off to a good start 47 19 lead after one half of play you see now the film cook and opening up in some zone it's how the Illini attack they go right down low to Dane Danger who had an excellent first half of action we saw him catching a couple of Lobs, some nice footwork on the post at eight points and three boards through the first 13 minutes of his action tonight. Oh, okay. I, I didn't know they were going to give him shots, but they are. Guys are walking around the line like they were going to take it out, but they ain't going to give an opportunity to improve from the free throw line. Like you said, maybe just reps for him in this category of the game as he gets that first one to go. Oh, he's got a slight hitch. And getting it to the shooting pocket, but his follow through is really nice. So just got to work out, work that out, get more confident like that. Danger born in Chicago, grew up in Minnesota. His dad played for Minnesota. He's got a lot of potential. Obviously, battled Kofi Coburn in practice over the last couple of years and learned a lot from him. Oh, no, no doubt about it. You know, you deal with Kofi. Kofi's presence, you know, people were really enamored with him, Jason, but they're really not going to understand his presence for a few more years by how dominant a big he was here for Illinois and in the Big Ten. Is there anyone you battled in practice here that really made you better? <laughs> Probably several guys. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, one of them was played 15 years in the NBA. That was Kendall Gill. Another uh -huh. one played 14 years in the NBA. That's Nick Anderson, so, yeah, uh, and Larry Smith, who didn't play professionally, but was as talented as all of them, and I had to try to deal with him in practice every day, so we had a, had a team that was very, very talented, similar to this Illini team as well. Some great history that these Illini fans loved hearing about. Oh, yeah, yeah, no doubt. I was very fortunate to be in some of the heyday of this proud franchise. Proud, proud uh, program. Sound like I'm talking about the Chicago Bulls. <laughs> well, your good friend Reggie Theus on the Bethune Cookman sideline did play for some time in the Chicago Bulls. And uh, he's trying to take his experience to this Bethune Cookman program again, just building the infrastructure, it is what he called it. As you get another block down low from Dave Danger, who's been good defensively as well. He's now the first player in double figures offensively, too. You really don't understand how long Danger's arms are until he's blocking your shot. He's standing like three feet away from you. It's an incredible reach. Pretty good timing. Does it without foul. And he's got the holiday shoes tonight, too. Yeah, I was, I was checking those out. 
God, I wanted to ask him, you know, are those comfortable? Because they look pretty sweet. He's, he's rocking them. The real question is, are they as sweet as your socks? Oh, wow. You got the multicolored socks going on. I wish we could show. <laughs> Meyer couldn't finish there. Good footwear all around tonight at State Farm Center. That's exactly right. Meyer, we referenced it earlier. Oh, good deed by Sincere. Playing the pass lane, almost came up with the steal. But you know, Meyer has been playing his best basketball, not only as an Alani, but of his career. He didn't average numbers like this at Baylor and didn't get as much opportunity as he's getting here. So really starting to come into his own and become the player that Brad Underwood anticipated when he tra transferred. And I love that you bring him up because a part of that, in the words of Brad Underwood, is that he's gotten himself in a much better shape. Yep. yep. Now he can go out and play 30 minutes in back-to-back -back games of these. That's right. And he was dealing with a oh, nice put. He was dealing with a little bit of a back issue in the offseason. And, you know, sometimes those can slow you down from your getting in shape and, and your progress. But he looks good now. There's Dylan Robertson, by the way, who got that last bucket for Bethune Cookman. He had some foul trouble in that opening half. You see him matched up with Danger. It was too battle again here. And Danger wins that round. Boy, once again, the long arms. Meyer through that pass. I didn't know if Danger was going to come up with it. Great hands and finish. Well, the length of the line on the floor right now is just really impressive. Four guys, six, seven or better. That's just a tough shot going down for Zion Harmon. He is the highest ranking recruit in program history to play for this Bethune Cookman team. Brad Underwood pointed him out yesterday. Meyer, a little pump fake. Opted to go down low to Danger again. And Danger getting a little crafty along the baseline. And Dylan Robertson, quick hands there. Knock it out of bounds. It's Danger's first double figure game over the last nine. Really fun to watch him get an offensive rhythm. Robertson did a good job of that forearm shiver there. Mm. Try to. Dane does a good job of feeling contact and spinning opposite. He's got a nice feel down low in the post with his footwork. We've seen it a couple of times. You mentioned he's a big guy with long arms, but pretty agile and bouncy too. Shannon working here at the controls for the Illini. This is going up. Oh, what a pass. I thought they were shooting this one. Nice wraparound feed finds Dane Danger. And that's one thing Brad Underwood pointed out to us, really, to what you just said there. Terrence Shannon's decision-making is something that goes under the radar when he leads, the, when he leads his team in score. Yeah, and he does a really good job. He's an underrated passer. Mm -hmm. He does a good job of getting downhill but can create for his teammate. K.J. Davis able to finish there. Now he gets a steal. Outlook feed up ahead to Damani McIntyre. Doesn't give this team a ton of offense, but a really good defender for Bethune Cookman. Robertson. Board hauled in by Meyer here. Oh, good danger good again! Dane Danger with the flush. Man, I want to stand up and give Sincere Harris a round of applause. That's a wonderful post feed that is, you rarely see in college basketball. Excellent feed. Danger has eight of Illini's ten points in this half. Nice block by Coleman. Up to that easy finish for oh, Coleman Hawkins. Nice job with the block and then getting rewarded. We've got a timeout called here. Largest lead for Illinois. Well, the Illini getting pretty much anything they want. Nice pass from Shannon. Dane Danger doing work in the paint. Illini rolling here in the second half. Course of the second half. Perfect so far from the field. Well, Dane's getting it done, and his teammates are finding him. In great position. Good follow up there. 
Beautiful footwork in the post with a nice finish. And it does a good job of walling up and blocking without fouling. Very talented big. He's kind of busted out of a slump here against Bethune Cookman. He mentioned he always has this kind of a, a stoic look, as there's a lot of by Warren Robertson who hammers it down hard. Very calm demeanor for Dane Danger. And he has kind of ridden the waves and reemerged today in very positive fashion. Yeah, and I, you know, it's, he's a uh, he's an interesting player. Like you say, he's got the best poker face on the team, in my opinion. Pretty big for the Illini in Big Ten play if, if he can keep playing at this level. Another battle on the floor. Brad Underwood certainly loves that effort from Terrence Shannon. From Shannon and this Illini team battling hard today. They're up big. In danger there. You see Zachary Perrin with the Afro. A big man from France, freshman that could be an addition to this roster very soon here. He is eligible now and has begun practicing with the team. So Dane Danger's play tonight. You think about what Perrin could bring. Listed at 6'10, with his shoes on, about 7'1. Very comfortable on the perimeter, Stephen, as we saw in practice earlier today. And a guy who could really bring some positive energy to this group. So the roster isn't quite done yet. If you're an Illini fan, you also have Luke Goody on the way as well. But that's going to be a big piece when they do get consistently Zachary Perrin in the lineup. It's an embarrassment of riches, Jason. That's yep. <laughs> what it is because, you know, you're talking about an Illini team. Seven players average seven points or more. And now you bring in, you get Luke Goody back from injury. Hopefully in the next few weeks and now you add Zachary Perrin who I got intel on him very skilled big Can you see, like you said he's comfortable facing up, but he's got some moves in the post as well Yep. so it gives the Illini yet more versatility, which is Scary because they seem to have as much versatility as anybody in the country It feels like when, when Perrin does arrive and he makes them more of an inside-out team Consistently because tonight we've seen what they look like when the threes are going down. It's tough not to guard them on the perimeter so that'll be fun to see what he can bring to the table Red Underwood told us he doesn't want to rush Perrin right now doesn't want to put him in situations that he's not ready for as Shannon drained the three the sixth of the night for Illinois all right and going back to what you said about what coach Underwood said about Perrin you know I know sometimes fans believe well he's eligible why is he not playing well you want to give the young man a chance to be successful he's got to learn what the team is trying to do the sets the defensive calls so it takes time yesterday was just his fourth practice so Brad Underwood did say he's been surprisingly in really good shape so far there's a drive and a foul call fans want this to be going the opposite way but instead it's a blocking foul on Melendez I like what you know what even though he didn't get the call Jason I like the fact that RJ Melendez he sacrificed his body there could have easily been a charge and Brad mm -hmm. Underwood loved the effort and boy he's hot at the official but you got to love the effort from RJ getting sacrificing his body there trying to come up with that charge and Melendez, by the way, hopefully now fully back from that shoulder soreness he was dealing with is kind of affecting him as we hear the fans get amped up now for the McNuggets at the free throw line. They want them this year and they don't quite get it. <laughs> the McNuggets will not be eaten by Illini fans tonight. Oh, boy. Maybe they will still be. I, I tell you what, you can tell that the students aren't here because if the students were here, <laughs> but really ooh, that would have been up. loud. Because free anything for college students uh, is that's big. Yeah, it's big. I had some McNuggets myself yeah, yesterday. Did you? Yeah, on the way in. And you live to tell about just it. Huh? To, <laughs> yeah, well, just to amp myself up specifically for that particular <laughs> moment. Oh, that's all right. Uh, I love these traditions that these different programs have around, you know, free throws or certain situations in the game. And it's a great crowd tonight. They go top to Robertson again. Collision and a foul. Well, the Illini did a good job fouling that time because Robertson was going to put a couple of line out on the poster. Boy, he, he's got some ups. 
I mean, quick ups, too. He's bouncy again. They didn't really have his presence in the opening half yeah. because of foul trouble. That's two quick ones on Melendez, by the way. In a, in a conference like the swag, a player like Robinson, Robertson, excuse me, Dylan will be one of the better athletes that you'll see, especially from a post position. So he, he will definitely have an advantage in picking up some wonderful experience here as he's going against some of these Big Ten programs. He's going to have a key role in the Bethune Cookman season. Again, they hit conference play soon against Florida AM. Epps back in for Illinois. Sincere Harris made his first college start tonight. Didn't knock down a three in that, that opening half and pulled glass on it, by the way, <laughs> while getting fouled in the process. He got extended banking hours on that one. But he was, uh, coach was not fooled. Nice dribble. A little up and under move didn't lead to two for Goodavicious. The Lithuanian forward for Bethune Cookman. It's the ball movement that Brad Underwood wanted to see. He wants movement consistently off the ball as well. Nice job to read that pass, though, from Damani McIntyre. Brad is hot. He's, he's not happy with something on the line I aren't doing. I'm not sure if it's maybe not handling the basketball as crisply as he would prefer like that. McIntyre gets the steal mentioned. He's a good defender and turned it into a long two, they say, at the opposite end. Timeout called by Brad Underwood. He mentioned he's not happy with the past few minutes. Up 62 to 35, but still coaching away. Well, Stephen, I hope you set your DVR, my friend, because you <laughs> are been given your, your due praise tonight. And here we go with some old school photos. 86 to 90 here. And of course, the 1989 Final Four, the Flying Illini team. You were Big Ten Defensive Player of the Year that season. Ooh. Those legs still give you the ups that we're seeing in this picture? Uh, today? No. Uh -huh. <laughs> no. No, that, that that basketball thing, I uh, I work out all the time, Jason, but I leave the basketball up to Kendall Gill. He's still playing like he's playing for a 10-day contract. So. <laughs> you got some shots up at shoot around, and it looked pretty good. Yeah, it was kind of rusty, though, I tell you. I mean, you know, it's, it's kind of like riding a bicycle, but it's been a while. You only had one non-conference home loss in your four seasons. Yeah, that, that was uh, to the mighty UNC uh, Tar Heels. J.R. Reed gave us fits that night. I think he dropped 30 on us. But uh, we used to hold it down here in the House of Pain. Make it difficult for people coming in here. It's been a painful night offensively for Bajun Cookman. A lot of it's looked like this. Sincere Harris has played a key role in the disruption defensively for Illinois. You know, the thing I like, uh, especially here, Jason, with the Illini, is that it doesn't matter who the opponent is necessarily at this level, right? If we're going to be honest, the film Cookman is a little overmatched physically by the Illini, but you're seeing good habits. And that's, what, that's why Brad is screaming here in the second half because it's not about the score. How you do anything is how you do everything. Looks like they waved that basket off. Oh, man. That was so pretty. I, I might have let him have that one. Dylan Robertson showing you he, he's got that next level athleticism. Great timing. DJ Carson said, though, definitely the right call. And the opposite end, some athleticism from Coleman Hawkins. Well, that's what Coleman needs. See the ball go through, get a dunk. Start to feel a little bit more confident about your offense. I think Coleman's in a in a period right now, Jason, where he's questioning when he should shoot. So times when he should, he's kind of he doesn't. And then sometimes when he doesn't, he should. So maybe that can help him get out of this little stretch here. Is that as simple as just being more aggressive? You know what it is. It. I, I heard Trey Demps in studio, uh, Big Ten Network studio. He said it best. When you're a scorer or you're struggling to score the basketball, you have to focus on everything else except that. Because when you're on the defensive end, you're on the glass, 
Coleman Hawkins is 6'10". He can affect the game in so many different ways. And if he focuses on that, his offense will come. Dylan Robertson hit the deck pretty hard there. Good to see him pop up. They're reviewing that last sequence now. And our officiating crew, DJ Cartinson, Brian Anslinger, and Tariq Lucas tonight here in Champaign. DJ's one of the best of the business. Yep. He'll get it right. And it was, it was funny, you know, talking with the, I love talking with the officials before the game, and I always ask them, where are you going next? And they have to sit there and think about it because, you know, they get, they're game to game like a lot of these teams are. They're just game to game. They try not to look too far ahead, focus in on what's next. And DJ said he's going to Michigan State next, yep. right? That's right. Yep. DJ went, DJ said there was nothing. Uh, yeah, just common foul. So the like Dane was kind of coming down and flailed his arms a little bit, caught Robertson. But it's like you said, good to see him up. And luckily, when you're 18 to 22, you bounce back rather quickly. You get hit when you're my age. You <laughs> sit down for a while. You're still very spry, my friend. I saw it shoot around today. Yeah, it looks a deceiving, Jason. Looks a deceiving. Dane Danger's looked pretty spry. This, oh, wow. What a try from Danger. Great call on that, Jason. Just looked like he knew where he wanted to go and got the job done. Yeah, look, see, I thought it, Jay Nips was supposed to come off the ball exchange action. He went the other way. So Dane had the whole side cleared out. Oh, good block. He's got multiple rejections tonight as well. That was an emphatic one. Well, the Illini, I think they they don't get enough credit on the defensive end because it, here's the drive by Dane. Great job of getting his shoulder into his opponent and then finishing strong. But the Illini lead the Big Ten in blocks. They're also top 25 in the country in field goal percentage defense. So. They don't get enough credit from on the defensive end. And as the jumper drops down for McIntyre, to that point, they're also second in the Big Ten in forcing turnovers. Yes. I mean, those are really good defensive categories that if they can maintain this pace, will benefit them come conference play. Eight blocks tonight for the Illini. Eight steals as well. Now that those are indications of getting after there are certain programs that will keep number of deflections but man when you could get blocks and steals at that pace that's an indication of playing hard so brad underwood said to his team after shoot around today today is about playing as hard and running as hard as possible Jaden x in double figures today He's playing hard diving to the floor can get it Confrontation at the other end, Meyer able to swap that out of bounds and looked like off the leg there of Dudovicius. So an excellent defensive play for Matthew Meyer getting now, back. I want our, our viewers to watch this. Meyer almost hits his head on the, see that? Mm. Almost hit his head on the rim. He got up so high on that block. Excellent defense. Hey. And he's worked a lot in his body, Matthew Meyer. When you look at his shooting, his athleticism can certainly go under the radar, too. He really got up defensively on that end. Now Coleman Hawkins head into the free throw line here. Once again, when you look at this Illini team, Jason, in terms of their length, I mean, I'm not sure there's a, a team that has more length in the Big Ten than this one. And when they can get better trust among each other, which will comes with more games and more intense situations. I think you're going to see this team really start to take off in Big Ten play. Remember, Big Ten play resumes for Illinois against Northwestern. Big in-state matchup there. Now their takeaway, Terrence Shannon getting it done defensively. Hawkins on the move, the dish, and it's a three. 
Green Danger trying to clean it up. Couldn't. He's just now guarded by Hawkins. Okay, they want him to go one on one against Coleman. That's kind of interesting there. Two guys about the same size with similar skill set. Instead, it's Davis knocking down the mid range jumper. Ball movement has been better today for the Illini, and it's Trent turning into triples all around. Well, that Hawkins jumper was possible because he got that dunk earlier in the half, and so his confidence is elevated. He's showing his range. Man, I like, I like the money. Back in time. He plays hard on both ends of the floor. He's able to answer back there. Hawkins one rebound shy of a double double. And one opportunity coming up for Dane Danger, who continues his tear. He has 20 points now on 8 of 10 shooting. In 23 minutes of action, he's the lead in the Illini to a big who's hired as the head football coach of Bethune Cookman, of course, Super Bowl champ with the Baltimore Ravens. College and Pro Football Hall of Fame inductee. That was a big hire for the school and the athletic program. And Reggie Theus played a role in that as the athletic director himself. Again, an interesting role. Duels as the head basketball coach and athletic director. Not something you hear every day. It's a lot of responsibility, but he takes pride in being able to make change and grow, as you mentioned, the infrastructure of Bethune Cookman Athletics. Oh, no doubt. And you know, when he approached Ed Reed for the position, he said, I need a I want a partnership. You, know, you need a partnership to have a guy like Ed Reed come in. And selfishly, I think it's a great hire because Ed Reed, one of my favorite players ever oh, yeah. at the NFL. I mean, he was a dog. And if he can instill that toughness. And that Wildcat football program, they're going to be good pretty soon, sooner rather than later. Yeah, was a beast in the secondary. Dane Danger was a beast tonight for Illinois. Maybe we'll see him again if we don't. He's been awesome tonight. Tied his career high in points with 20. He's really assertive, I think, is the word I'd use to describe his performance. I would agree. And I, I think it's just... It's a carryover from practice. The, the coaching staff was raving about the way that he had he practiced this week, and you know you see the you see the end result. I think Sincere Harris is probably in that same category. Seventy-five forty-one here. It was a busy day around the Big Ten. You see all the teams in action today. Central Michigan. Yeah, that's a oh, that's, that one really stands out. Yeah, that, that's a tough break for the Wolverines who are trying to find themselves life without Jalen Llewellyn, who was out with an ACL tear in that Kentucky game. Look at that Nebraska Iowa score. Nebraska 66, Iowa 50. Wondering if Chris Murray returned for the Hawkeyes. Nebraska, we talked about it. They've already pushed Purdue to the brink earlier this season. Took them to OT. There's a long triple try from Garrett. Ultimately the board to Meyer. Now Sincere Harris, who again made his first college start tonight and did a splendid job with it. Back out on the floor here. Melendez with some space. Lead the board. Meyer, a step back three. Their offensive rebound, which has been a very strong suit for Illinois in the early stages of this season, ultimately a foul called on Bethune Goodman's James Henderson. So Chris Murray did play in that Iowa game. He had 17 yeah. points, but going back to Nebraska, you remember they, they got one of the better wins in Big Ten. They went to a ranked great mm, yep. team and beat them by double digits. It's a good great team. And, and, you know, before Ryan Kochbrenner got hurt or uh, caught mononucleosis. And so... Again, the Big Ten, man, it's it, it, it's a deep conference. Yeah. No off nights in this league. Nope. It's fun. You think about all the fan bases around this league. Nebraska is passionate of a fan base in any with any sport. 
So for them to see that men's basketball team ramping up and gaining consistency could be fun for the future there. Yeah, that Pinnacle Bank Arena is one of the better venues in the Big Ten. And I'm also happy that Maryland is really playing well because Xfinity Center mm. out there in College Park, man, they get it rocking. So I'll be there for Maryland versus Nebraska next month. That'll be a fun one. Yes, it will. Battle on the deck here. Multiple players going at it. Ultimately, Bethune Cookman somehow emerges with the ball. But then a foul called from behind on a leave after a hectic, hectic sequence of action. Boy, Brad Underwood is not happy with that. And he's getting Ty Rogers in the game immediately. And I, you know what? Reggie Thies has got to be pleased, Jason. I mean, his guys are playing hard I mean, we, we've been singing the praises of Damani McIntyre he got the loose ball ahead of three Illini that were all going for the same possession and he comes up with it so McIntyre leading the way here for the Wildcats yep. and this Bethune Cookman team was held to 19 first half points they've clearly played much better you just look at the scoreboard they play much better in the second half never gave up never gave in which is a, a staple of this platoon cookman team and we spoke to multiple coaches this morning one thing that really jumped out to me with their group they say you don't have to worry about a single player not being on time for 6 a.m practice it's just the staple in the fabric of the culture that they're trying to build on the floor is still building consistency but behind the scenes it's there in terms of the culture we get the force turnover here Davis leading ahead up to Gudavicius and a foul call on Sincere Harris. So we've seen examples tonight, Jason, when the Illini get in trouble. It's over penetration. They get too deep. That time Terrence Shannon goes, he's trying to get to a strong hand left side. But when you get too deep on that penetration, there's a lot of traffic in there. In the, with, with some unforced turnovers. Are you looking for that pass maybe more so around the free throw line? Yeah, and, and you mean the last time that Shannon had the basketball? Yeah, I guess with the, 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 the structures in general offensively as opposed to getting too far deep into the paint. Well, the thing is, if, if you can get into the paint, if, but if there's a lot of traffic there, you got to be exceptional to fight through a lot of the contact and still finish at the rim. Deep here, but lead gets double teams. I'm telling you, McIntyre, man. Yeah, he's not giving up. No, and anytime there's a, a mix up, he's in the middle of it. Trying to get his team another possession. I like this young man. I would pick him in a pickup game in a heartbeat. He's that kind of a player. I mean, lead looked like he was going to have a layup and watch McIntyre come over on the hill. Rakes down low. Forcing the turnover. Again, typically a lot of road games for these SWAC teams in the non-conference. Illinois searching for win number nine, well on their way to finding that. Before Big Ten play resumes. Another turnover though, it's been a bit sloppy over the last few minutes. The other way, Harmon challenging Jaden Epps. And he draws a foul. You can tell Zion Hartman is a scorer because that time, a simple bounce pass and they have a layup. So, not all bad, but you know, when you have those opportunities, you got to give it up. Three turnovers over the last 90 seconds for Illinois. Yeah, this team, they get in trouble sometimes, Jason, when they, again, they over-penetrate, they over-handle. You know, if you can't get anywhere in two and three bounces, you got to give the rock up. Defenses at this level, even in the swag, will come in and take the rock from you and make it very difficult where you're trying to go if you over -handle. Dane Danger comes back in. He's been so impactful today. This Illini team on the season, the highs have been very high, the lows have been very low. Trying to find consistency with the highs is going to be the key when conference play resumes. Another turnover there by way of a travel. Last year's Big Ten title for Illinois marked the first since 2005. 
They've won a lot of Big Ten pick games over the past few years, but conference losses to Penn State and Maryland to begin conference play. This would be a big one if they can, again, they've obviously going to win by a big margin today, but closing it on the high note before you resume conference play does feel important. Oh, yeah, no, there's no doubt about it. And, you know, you want to have that good feeling like you're talking about when you resume Big Ten play. Oh, what a move. Harmon, a pretty finish after another turnover. Well, you can see why he was highly rated. Yep. Got game. That's a part of this highly touted freshman class for Illinois. Skipping it around again. Rogers blocks. Coming over there was McIntyre, your guy. I'm telling you, man, you can win with players like McIntyre. Leads to a Davis three. I'm telling you, he's setting his teammates up. He's making plays on both ends of the floor. Third double double of the year for Coleman Hawkins with the ball now. Give it back to him. Dude, Goodman playing some good defense over these past few minutes. They're on an 8-0 run. That's into the lane. Danger aboard. Danger going to the free throw line. And they line a little sloppy here with a large lead. Not surprised. Guys losing a little bit of focus. Nice block there. Tire going down and doing some good things. I know you said it. There's no nights off in the Big Ten. That schedule, particularly those first four there, really embody that. Oh, no doubt about it. You're talking about at Northwestern. You got uh, who I think is the second best team in the Big Ten right right now is Wisconsin coming in here. Then you got to go to Nebraska, who's feeling good about themselves after a win against Iowa. Michigan State is always tough right here on FS1, and then at Minnesota. So. The Illini hopefully can use this game as a catapult to get on a run. Yep. They did win at Northwestern, Nebraska, and Minnesota last season. The game that wasn't on that screen also, you and I will be here for their game against Indiana a few days after that uh, Minnesota game. So that's an, another big one, obviously. Well, the Illini really have to take care of home court. Yep. Uh, you know, if you wanted to try to compete for... Big Ten championship. And they've already let one slip away in the loss to Penn State. You've got to really hold serve at home and try to get at least half of the games on the road if you want to win. And their road schedule in, in February is brutal. Danger has a new clear high in points tonight with 22. Tried to dish it out to Jaden Epps there after running into some trouble. You know, sometimes it's uh, the Illini get so loose with the basketball, Jason. It seems like November. <laughs> you know, uh, it's one of the first games of the season, they just get really loose with the rock. You gotta really maintain possession. Gotta understand how important maintaining possession is. Nearly forced to turn over there, and a drive, and a jam. They get a blocking foul called. Elijah Olsen attacking the rack. Taking out a little frustration there. Big fella's like, you know what? I'm going with authority. Gets the finish. Ty Rogers gets put on a poster. And his teammate's going to let him know about it, too. Well, I will say, heading to the line with a smile on his face now. He's the tallest player on Bethune Cookman's roster, seven footer. Line eye on this end, no field goals in the last five minutes. They have had these stagnant stretches, and you mentioned taking care of the basketball, something that really hurt them early against Missouri. They just kind of got blitzed right away and never really recovered off the pick sixes, as Brad Underwood will tell you after a couple of our NFL references throughout the broadcast. That's something they're trying to avoid. Even if you're up 79 to 52, want to make sure things stay clean here. Well, they did. You know, they had three quick turnovers to.
to begin the game. Then they really had a nice stretch where they went without turnovers. And now, you know, 15 turnovers on the night, but they've got nine here in the second half. So Brad's going to have plenty to discuss with his team. Dane Danger checks out to a well-deserved applaud from this Fighting Illini crowd. They know how much effort he gave tonight. Then career high, 22 points. Oh. 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 Line violation, so Ty Rogers can take his time. Thank you, Russ. That opportunity there. This young man's got a lot of upside, Jason. He, Ty Rogers talk about his versatility and what he could do. He does it. And, and when he committed to Illinois, he said the player development factor was one of the biggest, if not the biggest, factor in that decision. You know better than anyone. The coaches here do a fantastic job. So just a matter of watching his development. Oh, yeah. Tim Anderson, Trent Frazier, Jeff Alexander, they did excellent job of getting these guys to try to improve on their weaknesses and strengthen what they're already good at. Roman Hawkins checks out. Double-double for him tonight. 11 points, 11 rebounds. Four assists as well. It's a good game for Coleman. 4-7, like you said, from the field. And so, you know, that's a high percentage. He's efficient. But the 11 rebounds is even more important because of that effort going after the rock. 11 points, 11 boards. Good luck anytime you can have 11 11 in your stat line, too. Yeah, good call, good call there. Mm -hmm. 2.22 to go in this final half of action here in Champaign. Here, Harris, equally as important a part of this story tonight for Illinois. Started with Sky Clark out. Hopefully, they get Sky Clark back soon. We mentioned Zachary Perrin, the freshman from France. Also, his arrival will hopefully come soon to the lineup. He's in practice right now. He had his fourth practice yesterday, seven footer from France. And then Luke Goody, too. We spoke to him and maybe expecting mid January there. Yeah. And I, I think that. Luke Goody's really, I mean, Zachary Perrin will help, but it's still kind of unknown what he can bring. But right. Luke Goody can stretch the floor. Yeah. Big defender, really good leader as well. I think his leadership has been lacking here with this team that's trying to find themselves. He will be a nice addition during conference play. <laughs> Well, it's McNugget time again. <laughs> this is crazy. This is the loudest it's been in this venue all night. They got it. And Sincere Harris trying to capitalize on it. Pretty exciting sequence there. It was. Started with McNuggets, ended with a jam. I can't think of a better sequence. <laughs> That woke State Farm Center up. Yes, it did. Yes, it did. <laughs> so now they just have to text the McNuggets to 83200. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Where was that when I was in school? That would have been nice after a win. Heck yeah. Free? Man, that free is for me, I tell you. <laughs> And Sincere Harris continues his tear. He's in double figures now with 12 points. And he's got a 50 megawatt smile there. You saw it. Teammates very happy for him. Fifth player for Illinois in double figures. Timeout called. It's a 6 0 run over the last 90 seconds, and the smiles are a plenty right now. Well deserved, especially for that man, Sincere Harris. Well, Jason, you know, we've been talking about this young man, and Harris has been sincere with his effort. And anytime you play as hard as he does, good things happen. Even the 
He got the extended banking hours there. And then gets a chance to put a little highlight reel and send the Illini fans home happy. Look at the numbers in the first career start for Sincere Harris. You wonder if his role in the starting lineup will continue now after what he's done tonight. It's obviously a game more from the jump. Illinois has uh, been all over with him, Cookman, and got higher caliber opponents coming up. But it's something that feels like it's been a positive burst for them. That's definitely a question moving forward if you're in the lineup. Then does Sincere Harris stay in the starting lineup? Well, yeah, you know, it's definitely a question. And I know he's become a fan favorite because of the way he plays. But generally, if you are a starter like Sky Clark and you get injured, when you come back, the general consensus is that you keep your starting position. But the way that he's played, like you're saying, and the effect on his team, you just never know. Now, the young Illini cheerleader here, the current ones better watch out. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, gotta love the Illini fans. Yeah. Running the gamut in terms of age range tonight. Fun crowd on this Thursday evening. Here in Champaign. Rogers kicks it. Melendez shoots it. And we're getting stuck. And I think, you know, RJ's just trying to get his confidence consistent. Had a little shoulder uh, issue. He's back now. Trying to trying to get himself to find that rhythm. Looking for it again there. It'll be big to see him. Hopefully, we don't know if he's back to full health yet with dealing with that shoulder soreness. But at his best, he's a, a really good three-point shooter and a good defender as well. Yes, he is. Enter tonight leading the team in steals. Out of the final minute now here in Champaign. It was a really good second half effort from this Bethune Cookman team. But it was just such a rough start for them. Never quite responded. It's a high hurdle to climb from the get go. But Reggie Theus is building something with Bethune Cookman and their athletic program. Well, oh, they'll be competitive in the SWAC, and the SWAC has done a lot better. I mean, yes. got two wins over Power Six conferences this season already, so. He knows that they've got to be locked and loaded when they see the FAMU Rattlers here in their first conference game coming up next. Texas Southern made the NCAA tournament out of the SWAC last season, lost to the eventual champ, Kansas. So point four, all you can do is really catch and tip. Now Illinois can just dribble it out. Well, it was a few days of anguish for Illini fans after that Mizzou loss, but hopefully this will put a smile on their face. By the way, the Illini came out and started this game with that intensity and speed in sharing the basketball. Right under what mentioned it. There are going to be speed bumps along the road going to be key in terms of how you recover from those speed bumps with this young group this year. And they recovered well tonight from the get-go. They played harder, they fought harder, forced turnovers that led to points. A little tweak in the starting lineup with Sincere Harris coming in. Sky Clark down with the injury. Hopefully they get him back soon. But it's a fun Illini group. We mentioned it. The ceiling is very high. And at times we saw the ceiling tonight. It was a blast to bring this one to you. Always a blast to work with you, my friend. Yeah, great job, Jason. That was a lot of fun. Thanks, Stephen. Stephen Bardo, I'm Jason Ross, Jr. Thanks for tuning in to our Fox College Basketball doubleheader tonight. Capped it off here in Champaign. Hope you have a wonderful rest of your 2022 and a fun time ringing in the new year.